Hi everyone and welcome back to Warno. Today I've got a guide on hotkeys for you. This is because someone asked me about doing a guide with micromanagement in mind. Now micromanagement realistically is a skill. It's something you have to learn and it's something that some people are simply better at than others. So it's very difficult to do a guide on that. But I can do guides on things that perhaps relate to it. And today I'm going to do one on hotkeys because learning the hotkeys in the game can save you time and effort. Rather than you have to look at the screen to see what button you're clicking on, you can just without looking eventually think I need to hit this key on the keyboard to achieve this effect or this command. Now there are many different hotkeys in Warno just as there have been in previous games from Ugen. So we're going to go over the majority of the straightforward ones that are other ones that you can actually apply to keys that don't currently have any allocation on them. So that's something that the pros will do and we can talk about that at the end. And also at the end of the video, I'll leave up a fantastic map of all the keys that are currently available in game, which has kindly been created by someone on the Steam Workshop. So I'll leave a link to that down below as well. So, let's start with the basics, shall we? Infantry. We have infantry here in SPW-70s. It doesn't really matter what they're in. So, at the moment, we can see we've got various little buttons down here. Now, the great thing is, Eugen have tried to be helpful. If you have a look at these, you will see that there are hotkeys assigned and listed for the majority of these things. Okay, move no, because that's just a right click. But move fast is F, reverse is G, fire position is T, hunt is Q, quick hunt N. And quick hunt is the same as attack move, but using the roads instead. Uh, so it's basically the same as move fast. Return fire is just a change to the setting of the unit itself. So units will have a default that they will open fire. You can change some of these settings in settings, funnily enough. These are sort of your rules of engagement. You've got unload a position, which you'll have seen me use multiple times, which is Y, and then just unload, which is U. So when you could set unload position, panic, realize you need to unload sooner, and then you would unload. But rather than just list them all off like that, we're actually going to use them. So here we go. We've selected our two squads of infantry in the SPWs, and I'm just going to initially right-click and drive them up to here. So this is a standard move command. You'll notice now that stop has lit up. So we could press E now, and they will immediately stop what they're doing. So say you are moving forward in a tree line, coming to the edge of it, and you realize that it's no longer safe to do so. You could quickly hit E, and your unit will stop. Move fast. There's the next one down. And if we hit F, and we could hit it anywhere, I mean, in the middle of a field, you'll notice that the units will immediately decide that they're going to take the road. So they will move as fast as they can to that point. I'm going to use G, and I'm going to reverse them. And the unit will turn their front away from where you've clicked. So say you see enemy vehicles coming at you you can reverse and you'll turn your front armor to them that's perhaps more relevant for tanks than smaller vehicles so then we have hunt or attack move as it's called in most games and that's just q and click q and left click nice and straightforward and then in this game there's also quick hunt which is on the end key which is a little bit further away than everything else but admittedly it's not something i use that often it is how units come on the map though have you ever noticed that if i press shift which is one of the other hotkeys i suppose you can see all the commands that are given to your units if you press it without any selected it shows you everything if you just select some units it highlights just those units but when you call a unit in off the map they actually come in on quick hunt mode so they will engage as they go. Return fire. Well, I don't really use this myself, but obviously it is there. Return fire will just change the status of the unit. So they will no longer fire at will. They will technically just return fire when they are shot at. 
In fairness, most of the time, you don't want your units to do that in Warno because you want to get the first shot off in most situations. But let's do some other commands with infantry. So another big command obviously is special because it's a transport vehicle. We can hit Y and we can tell our units to unload in the middle of this field. And they will take the fastest route to do that if you do unload at position. So they will try and follow the road. I'm surprised that one didn't. Now let's say our units are about to be attacked. Well, we just hit U and our units will stop and immediately unload. And then as default, they will seek cover. That's just part of the rules of engagement setting, which you can see down here. They will go for cover. You can change these just by clicking on them. Hold position, do nothing. Cover is the standard. There are situations where that's fine and there are situations where you really wish a unit hadn't gone into cover. Change that in settings at your own risk though. Obviously there are a lot of situations where you wish the unit probably was in cover. Okay, and the last thing which we haven't really covered in all of these things is the smart orders for group. Season hold position. Now, honestly, basically all this does is seemingly gets the units to move into a safe position or in cover position within an area. Um, it doesn't really seem to do much, I've got to be honest. I'm not sure if they're planning to do more with this, but, you know, like I can select C's and tell them to go there, and they will all now head over that way and give themselves very strange orders. So while there are technically hotkeys for these, I can't really think of a situation when you would ever want to use this. It's basically letting the AI take over control. Next commands are really special commands, and different vehicles have different special commands. The BMP-1 can carry infantry, therefore it has the unload special commands, as we've already looked at. It also has the smoke special command. Some vehicles are able to smoke themselves, and when I say that it means they can smoke in front of them. They don't smoke all around them, they just put some smoke shells in front of the vehicle to protect it from incoming fire. So let's demonstrate that with the BMP-1. I hit B. There we go. We smoke. Really straightforward. Takes about a second to kick in. Now something to bear in mind about the smoke command is not to panic when you use it. Because if you hit B and keep hitting B, it keeps resetting it. You see? So I'm actually just resetting it every time I hit B. So it's never actually pressing and kicking in. I'm just resetting it all the time. And also, if I press B and then move, I cancel it. The vehicle can only do the smoke while static. So if I press G and reverse and then press B, the unit will stop and smoke. Or if I try and smoke and then reverse, it will cancel the smoke. So you've got to let the smoke kick in before you give another command. And that's something that is easy to trip up on. I've done it myself. You're in a panic. Your unit's getting attacked. You want to reverse it. You hit smoke. You reverse. The unit gets hit anyway because you cancel the smoke. Now, not all vehicles can smoke. Some tanks do not have the ability, especially if they are cheaper tanks. Now, one of the other abilities that we haven't talked about yet for units is the attack position command. So, if you press T... You will fire at position. And they will fire all our weapons that are within that range at that position. So in this case the flame tank is firing flames and everything else. And this can be a good way to attack a tree line. Maybe, maybe you know there are enemy infantry there. But you can't see them. But you know they're there so you can use the flame tank to basically turn the area into a burning mess. We talked about vehicles that can smoke themselves. What about artillery and mortars? So mortars are great at smoking. And they have smoke position. And it's exactly the same key, B. If you press B, your mortars will smoke position. If you select the artillery and you press B, they will smoke the position. Simple as that. Or perhaps you just want to attack a position with shells. Then you press T and you fire at position. Exactly the same 
as with the vehicles. Another very important hotkey, which we haven't covered yet, is H. H is disable all weapon. So, one of the main things you will tend to use this for are anti-air units. So, a good example of this is a cub. They are radar units. That means that enemies can bring in seed aircraft to destroy them. But seed aircraft cannot fire at them if their weapons are turned off. To turn their weapons off, you can click on the weapon. Each individual weapon can be turned off. So if you wish to just turn one off, you can click on it. However, if you press H on the keyboard, you will achieve the same effect for all weapons on that vehicle. Now, this is very handy for having these cubs on a hotkey. So if I select both of them and I press Control and 1, this puts them in group 1. You press Control and hold it down and then press a number to get a group. Now I can turn the weapons off or on as I see fit. And when you turn the weapons off, you'll notice that some of the buttons, Hunt and Quick Hunt, go grey because they can no longer fire. And you'll also notice the little symbol has gone off their icon. You'll notice they have a little radar sort of symbol on there. And if you press H, it turns that off. The same applies to any vehicle or any unit in the game. So if I select the T-72 and press H, I will turn off all the weapons. Okay, I think we've covered the majority of the basic commands for units in the game. There's a couple of others that we'll go over now. So one is for aircraft. So we can call in a MiG-23. Now all aircraft or all jets have the ability to evac. By default, the key for that is V. You hit V and they will evac. You cannot cancel that. Once you evac, they will evac from the map. The last thing that we haven't looked at, which is perhaps a little bit more advanced, is helicopters. So I have put land on K and I have put change altitude on X. K and X were free keys that weren't being used. So I've opted to do that. To do that, you simply go into options, find the controls, scroll down to wherever you find land. There we go. You click on this area and then you hit the key that you want. It doesn't really show you that you've clicked on the area, so it's a little bit confusing. So if I click on it, you can see it's highlighted because there's actually an, uh, something there. But if I click on move, it just says left mouse button not available. I think you have to click on it once, put the command in, and then it knows. But yeah, that it's a bit weird that it doesn't like highlight the row or something to say that you're trying to give it a command. Uh, there's a couple of things like fall back, which don't actually do anything in the game. Uh, there's fall back and there is call artillery. They have no bearing in Warno. I think it's left over from Seal Division 2. So just while we're in here, I thought I'd mention that. Land is pretty straightforward. You're always going to be using land for various things. You're going to use land when you are landing to rearm and repair a chopper. You're going to use land when you want to avoid it getting hit by aircraft or hit by anti-air units. The other thing that you might use, though, is change altitude. So this is where you're getting into slightly more fancy stuff, but you'll see that the uh, tournament players will quite often do this. So by default, helicopters kind of hover at a particular level. We can adjust that by pressing the X key or the change altitude button. So if I press X, there we go, it is moving up, so it gets higher. And that means that it is more visible to anti-air. And I can do the same again, and it will go back down. There's only two levels. High or low. But obviously, high means you're more susceptible, but you have better vision. Low means you have less vision, but are less susceptible. What I should note is that this only applies when the unit is stationary. If it is moving, it will return to its maximum height. Okay, we've pretty much talked about all of the unit movement and command keys for the most part. At least the ones that you'll certainly be using on a regular basis and a couple of more advanced ones you'll have to set yourself. 
Other important keys to mention are the space bar, which takes you to the last incident. So whatever the game deems an incident that would be, so a unit getting destroyed perhaps, uh, a unit coming under fire, things like that is where the space bar will jump your camera to. There is also the shift key, which not only shows you all orders that are currently given, so let's uh, give a couple of orders to some random units. If I deselect everything and press shift, I can see all those commands. If I just select one unit, I just see its command. Now, the other thing you can do with shift is queue up commands. So let's move fast to there, then move fast to there, then move fast back to there. Now, it will look like it's not going to follow the road because it's just got a straight line going from point to point. That's just because the AI system has not yet allocated the road to the unit. It will do that once it reaches that point. Another good example of shift command is that you can queue up attack orders. So with our artillery, we could click to attack there. Then I want to move them afterwards so they don't get counter batteries. So I'd shift right click down here. And then I would want to perhaps attack the buildings further back and kill the infantry that I know is in there. And then I want them to move again. So you can queue up commands like that. Another thing you can do, which isn't really covered anywhere, is switch between units. So I've got my three mortars selected here. If I press tab, it specifically highlights one of those units. In this case, the first one, second, third. Now these can be in a group. So if we put these on control group two, and we hit two, and then I can still tab through them. So let's give them individual commands. So I've tabbed and I've got the first one selected, and I'm going to tell it to attack there. Then the second one, I'm going to tell it to smoke in the middle, and then the third one, I'm going to tell it to attack over here. And you'll see in the meantime, our artillery is moving over that way. Here are our mortars go, all given individual commands. And that applies to any units. We've got a bunch of tanks here. Let's select the first one and tell it to move to there. Second one will move to there, third one will move to there, fourth one will move to there. And they will all carry out their individual orders. Perhaps it's the case that you have a load of units clustered together and you can't quite click on the one you want. Well, you just select them all, tab to the one you wish to grab hold of, and move it. And that's basically it for hotkeys. The only way to learn how to use them is to literally just use them. And it will speed up your gameplay if you can use them. Obviously, it's shaving off a few seconds here and there, but it can mean all the difference when you're in the middle of a firefight, not having to worry about looking at the bottom corner of the screen. I will leave up now this lovely image by Tressa, which I'll leave a link to down below, and that is over on the Steam Workshop. And it's just a handy little guide. There are many maps out there or hotkey maps out there, but this was just the first one that came up for me. So hopefully some of you will find it helpful. Please do like, share, subscribe, stay tuned for more one on news guides, and I'll see you all soon.